Transit is one of the most controversial maps in all of COD Zombies history. Most agree that it's definitely not their favorite map of all time, but some find it at least enjoyable to play from time to time, meanwhile others never want to touch it again. It's possible these people don't want to play it again simply because they first played it around the time it launched and expected way too much from it. When Black Ops 1's life cycle came to a close, it was almost two years before Black Ops 2 released. That entire time, people were getting their hopes extremely high for the next Zombies map, and when they played Transit, to say the least, it didn't really meet what they were expecting. Is this the reason why people don't like it, or is it just objectively worse than other maps like Kino der Toten, for example? Today, I wanted to try and figure out for myself, so I replayed Transit 12 years later to see if it's really as bad as most people think. I started out how you would literally any Transit game, just building the turbine in the starting room so I didn't have to pay for the first door. But that's when I realized that even things like buildables could be something that turned people away from this map, and even zombies just as a whole. Most Black Ops 1 maps are very simple, with super easy to understand layouts and minor easter eggs if any at all. But in your first game of Black Ops 2, you immediately have to find the workbench and search for all three parts required for the turbine if you don't want to buy the first door. Now that might not seem too bad because players don't even need to really build the turbine because it's just to save some points, right? But you actually do need it because without it, you wouldn't be able to get to the pack-a-punch machine. This kind of represents the separation of the zombies community in a way, because the people who like the more simple, just load in and shoot zombies kind of maps probably didn't like Transit as much, and really any map after it. But I will give it to Treyarch that they made it pretty easy to figure out how to build because they put the very biggest part in the direct center of the room. But the point still stands where you could tell from this map that they were heading in a more complicated direction and that definitely turned some people off of the mode. But anyway, I made my way outside and I was greeted with the bus and Ted. As soon as I walked in that bus, I remembered that if you start knifing Ted, you can actually make him mad, and he'll start swearing at you and stuff, and if you do it long enough, he can even kick you off. If he happens to kick you off the bus while he's driving, well, you're just gonna be stuck in the fog while he drives off into the distance. I'm not good right now, man. I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and look at this shit. Look at this. I didn't want to get left in the dust, though, so I made sure Ted was happy while he was driving me and just shot the zombies in the back of the bus. I wasn't very much help shooting at them because they looked like they just did the 5,000 grams of caffeine challenge and my aim just couldn't hold up. But after getting literally double swiped and somehow not dying without Juggernaut, we made it to the diner. I did the ancient method to try to get the ray gun every time and it's safe to say if it ever did work then it's definitely patched now because I got the worst gun in the entire game. I also remembered that in most of the locations there's these little shacks or places where you could place the turbine down to get some parts. In this one I got the best part which is the ladder. Now I could be smart and use this ladder inside the diner, which if you didn't know you can get the galva knuckles and it's great for getting points in the early rounds. But what I really just did is put it in the bus because I wanted to be on top of it. I spun the box as much as possible because I wanted to get a good gun before the bus left but I just got horrible luck the entire time. At least before the bus left I got this double points drop when there was a bunch of zombies and I was able to get a whole bunch of points. The next one is a zombies map that nobody really remembers and that is farm. I made a whole video trying to get round 50 on this map and just the ending was tragic. While I was in here I was getting flashbacks about my death and didn't really do much but that's alright because especially when the power is not turned on there's not really much to do in here anyway. I considered building the machine gun turret, but if you've ever used this thing, you know that it literally kills you more often than it kills the zombies. I don't know why Treyarch was, thought it was a good idea to have the turret shoot at you, but that's just how it is. Jeez. Up next, I arrived at probably the most important location on the map, and that is the power station. As I was saying before, some people don't really like the fact that you have to build the power switch rather than just turning it on like you would in the previous games. But all the parts in here are pretty easy to find and it's also in a small space so I didn't struggle with it too much. I guess Treyarch expects you to be like a speedrunner or something though because before I even turned the power on, the bus started to leave. So even after I got out of the power station, I was still essentially trapped at this location until the bus came all the way back around the entire map. I had so many close encounters while I was here though, like when this one zombie snuck up behind me and scared me so bad and I still somehow managed to clutch it up. After waiting such a long time, I felt a little brave and decided maybe I could just make my way through the fog without the bus and get to the town. But as soon as I did this, I heard Ted's little horn behind me so I just turned around and went back. Finally, I was leaving the power station at round 10 with 18,000 points and I was on my way to the town. The first thing I did was make my way straight to Juggernaut because it was now round 11 and I still had zero perks. I then went inside this room and threw a grenade exactly at this safe which allows you to get pack a punch. 
But it's more complicated than that because at the power station you also needed to place your turbine exactly right there. While your turbine is in there you need Ted to take you to the town and the entire time you just need to pray that some random zombie doesn't sneak in and destroy your turbine. I walked into the room where I would be able to get pack a punch but it turns out some zombie did actually just destroy my turbine. That means I had to make my way back around the entire map and this map is gigantic. Grab a new turbine, head all the way back to the power station and put it in the same spot and then go straight to the town again. I got more lucky on my second try and the turbine actually did stay up and I was able to get into the pack a punch room. But I realized if you just bought Black Ops 2 and this is your first time playing the game, there's no guides or anything like that, how are you supposed to know that you have to do all of this just to get the pack a punch machine? This is kind of the same issue I was talking about at the start of the video where the average player is not going to know how to do this and they're not going to enjoy the map if they can't do something like simply unlocking Pack-A-Punch. I mean really, who's going to know that you have to place the turbine at exactly this spot in the power station for whatever reason, throw a grenade at this safe which happens to just blow it open, and that just so happens to allow you access to one of the most essential items in zombies which is the Pack-A-Punch machine. Now this isn't even super complicated when you compare it to some easter eggs and things like that, but but easter eggs actually should be complicated because they're not essential in every single game of zombies that you play. But requiring the players to know and do this every game they want to have a chance at getting a high round and unlock the Pack-A-Punch machine is kind of ridiculous. But now that all that's done and Pack-A-Punch is unlocked, I literally have zero bullets in both my guns and I, my only option is to actually Pack-A-Punch one of these guns to get ammo because for some reason there's just zero wall guns that you can buy in the town. But I mean, that's not that big of an issue that I have to pack a punch because when I went all the way around the map again to be able to actually unlock pack a punch, I now have like 40,000 points. So, and just like that, both our guns are upgraded. And for some reason, I could have sworn you could have like double pack a punch weapons to change the sight and stuff, but now you just can't. I'm not sure why. Now that I had everything I needed, I decided to do a final stand and see how long I could last inside this little diner. Well, that is the game, and if I had to re-rate this map from 1 to 10, I'd probably give it like a 7. It was actually pretty fun to go and re-explore everything, but that is with the fact that I already knew how to do everything. If that was my first ever time playing the map and I couldn't figure out how to do simple things like get to pack a punch or anything like that, then probably be less enjoyable. But honestly, if you ask me, I think maybe Transit is a little overhated because Treyarch had a lot of ambitious plans and everything. You could tell that they were trying to expand a lot, but it just, it didn't quite turn out how they wanted probably. But anyway, that is going to be this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you all later.